Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome to Legion Talk, episode number 37. Now, what we're going to be talking about today is something that I had to wait a little while to make because as former U.S. Army military police, I was infuriated. Multiple explosions at the Kabul airport kills 12 U.S. service members and multi many, many, many more Af Afghan citizens. That's, this, is where, this is where we're at. This is where we're at. I mean, this is, this is absolute nonsense. <sighs> uh, the Bloomberg article here, two explosions outside Kabul's. Uh, that was before this was written 46 minutes ago. I believe there's been a third since then. Um, maybe around the same time the article was published. Uh, so obviously they, they wrote it before then. I think there's a third blast now. Um, Outside Kabul's international airport killed 12 U.S. service members and at least 13 Afghans and wounded dozens more less than a week before U.S. forces are due to depart. Among the dead were 11 U.S. Marines and a Navy medic, according to a person familiar with the situation. The Associated Press earlier reported the 12 deaths, in addition to the U.S. troops, at least 13 Afghans were killed and 52 others wounded. Taliban, Taliban spokesman, uh, why are we even, why are we even talking to these people right now? We need to go in there, and I just want to. Terrorists took their lives at the very moment these troops were trying to save lives. Uh, this is what the Taliban spokesman, uh, spokesman said. Uh, terrorists took their lives at the very moment these troops were trying to save the lives of others. Secretary of Defense uh, the Lloyd Austin said in a statement on the Americans killed. I'm discombobulated because I'm irritated. We uh, mourn their loss. Yep, no, we know. Yeah, everybody always always mourns a loss. The deaths, the deaths of U.S. troops after more than 100,000 people have been evacuated from Afghanistan in the past two weeks will significantly raise the pressure on President Joe Biden to decide if he sticks with, with the August 31st deadline to get all American forces out and to explain why the U.S. appeared to be caught off guard by the Afghan government's sudden collapse. Gee whiz. Well, that's what happens when you um, you just yank everybody out. You evacuate the civilians first. This isn't hard. You evacuate the civilians first, then the essential military vehicles and gear, and then you bring the, the troops out after everything has been secured. We have literally handed, I believe from what, one report that I heard, $85 million worth of military equipment to the Taliban. We left $85 million over there. <laughs> This is insane. This is absolutely insane. <clears throat> um, uh, the Taliban blamed the U.S., which is directing a military-led evacuation from Kabul, for drawing large crowds to the airport perimeter. I say at this point, just go in there and, and, and turn it on. Just this ridiculous. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Maju Hadid said an investigation into who was behind the attack has continued, though many analysts said an offshoot of, of the Islamic State and enemy of both the Taliban and the U.S. could be to blame. And yeah, we'll see. We strongly condemn this lethal attack, which happened at an area of Kabul airport, which is under the control of Americans, Mujahideen said. They were responsible for the security of the area. So the Taliban is... Um, Uh, the blast occurred around the time President Joe Biden was scheduled to meet with his national security team uh, about the situation in Afghanistan. He has since been briefed in the White House situation, according to an official, but no statement, uh, no statement to the, the world and the American people on what Joe Biden thinks and, and what happened. Um, a late morning meeting with uh, visiting Israeli Prime Minister uh, Naftali Bennett is now postponed, the White House said, and a planned virtual meeting with governors discussed take, taking an Afghanistan refugee has been called off. An Afghanistan refugee has been called off. Uh, the UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson is being kept up, up to date. He's actually already spoken to the public, by the way, so we're, we're definitely lacking behind there. Good job, Joe. Um, and Kamala, you know, she's, um, she's in... South Korea or Vietnam, right? Vietnam, I think, right now. This is just ridiculous. I mean, but she she didn't have the wherewithal to go to the U, you know the to the U.S. southern border like she was tasked to do. But it's neither here nor there. Uh, the long and the short of it is that um, Americans are dead. 
Afghanis are dead and many are wounded, probably on both sides. That, um, that kind of says all you need to know about that. Going over to here to the Telegraph, uh, impeach Joe Biden. Republicans fury grows over Afghanistan debacle. Yeah. Who would have thought? And this is before the attack. 6 a.m. before the attack. Republicans are stepping up calls to impeach Joe Biden, putting Kamala Harris there, too, because she's just as inept and doesn't know what she's doing over this uh, over his disastrous handling of the Afghanistan withdrawal. A move to impeach the U.S. president for high crimes and misdemeanors could take place if Republicans win back control of Congress in midterm elections next year, which look increasingly likely in the wake of the debacle. You think it should be easy for Republicans to, to take that back. I mean, it should not be hard because if, if you can't take them back this way, um, I would I would encourage that that uh, Democrats need to hop on board the uh, impeach Joe Biden train, too, because this is nuts. This is nuts. There are people who on Twitter, uh, of all places, who still blame Trump for this. And it's like um, President Trump, he's not the president anymore. He hasn't been president since, um, you know, mid-January, just just for the record. Just saying, mid-January. Uh, Lindsey Graham, the prominent Republican U.S. senator and a close ally of Donald Trump, said, what does that matter if he's a close ally of Donald Trump? Trump's not the president. Who cares? Like, these people can't get away from president uh, from, from Trump. Everything's always like Trump. They're like, well, well Trump did this. He's still not the president anymore. Joe Biden is. I'm just saying. I mean, what? Said, I think he, Mr. Biden, should be impeached. Yeah, I think Joe Biden deserves to be impeached because he's abandoned thousands of Afghans who fought with us. And he's going to abandon some American citizens because he uh, capitulated the, to the Taliban to an uh, August 31st deadline. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Uh, according to Mr. Graham, a former military uh, lawyer and former chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee, leaving one America behind or failing to evacuate Afghans who helped America would be prosecu prosecutable as a high crime and misdemeanor under the U.S. Constitution. Absolutely it would. This is worse than Saigon. That's, that's not a joke. This is worse than Saigon. This is going to go down is the worst military action, worst military mistake in U.S. history. This is worse than Saigon. According, according to Mr. Roy, uh, according to Mr. Roy, uh, sorry, um, the House Judiciary Committee is the usual starting point for an investigation and recommends articles of impeachment. According to Mr. Roy, impeachment is warranted due to Mr. Biden's complete incompetence uh, on all fashions. Mr. Biden to be impeached uh, to be impeached the House of Representatives would have to vote in favor of at least one charge by by a simple majority and there would then be a trial in the Senate. Yes, we all know that Trump got impeached twice but neither one stuck. Yeah, Trump got impeached over a phone call and no Americans died. 12 Americans have died, 13 Afghanis and countless wounded. Phone call Death worse than Saigon. I'm I'm going to go, I'm going to kind of go like this. Sorry, I'm still so agitated. This is, this is nuts. This is nuts. It should not be if Republicans win back control of, no. It should not be if Republicans win back control in the midterm elections. It should not. This should, should not be, this is, should not be a partisan issue. It should be bipartisan that Joe Biden has really humped the bunk. Mr. McCarthy, uh, if Republicans win back the control in the midterm elections next year, Kevin McCarthy, the Republican leader in the House, will become Speaker. Yeah, get rid of Nancy Pelosi, too. She's on Twitter doing tweeting stuff and, and about the about International Women's Day. Look, I'm, I'm all for, guess what? There, there are female U.S. soldiers. You, you realize that, right? There are female Americans trapped in Afghanistan. International Women's Day right now, who cares? Let's worry about the women that are over in Afghanistan. Whether they're American or Afghanis. They're over in Afghanistan. They're women. Guarantee a few women got blowed up. Nancy, she she is 
she's I'm, I might dislike her more than anybody. She's a vile vodka fueled woman. Um, if Biden takes an illegal action, he would uh, um, said he would not pursue impeachment for political purposes. But if uh, if Biden takes an illegal action, we would move to impeach him. He lambasted Mr. Biden over Afghanistan, saying he turned his back on our own citizens stranded in Afghanistan. He's turned our back on our allies and partners. He's turned his back on his duties as commander in chief. We're going to leave it right there. I'm not going to read any more of this nonsense. Joe Biden, you need to, you and Kamala Harris need to resign. Um, and if you don't, the uh, American people need to move to impeach both of you immediately because this is absolutely abhorrent. You have not, you have not, uh, as of 3.57 p.m. my time uh, on the eastern United States, you have not put out a, a, you have not come out with a press release. Uh, Jen Psaki hasn't come out and said anything. Kamal Harris hasn't said anything. And these incidents started around roughly 10 a.m. this morning, seven hours ago. Where you at, bro? Where you at? Just absolutely disgraceful. This this is this is this is one of the worst days in U.S. history, and so close to an, another horrendous day in U.S. history, September 11th. Good job, Joe Biden. You've screwed it again because you're an inept old man. Take Kamala Harris with you and get the fudge out.